Hey everyone, welcome to this video. We're gonna talk about the top three things small businesses need on their website. What, three things. What, I mean, Warren, seriously, what are the things, what's the one thing it, that's not a, a nice to have, but a need to have for a local small business? Uh, okay, well, I think, you know, barring all of the uh, 33 things that you would really need to have, <laughs> let's imagine we've got all those in place. Um, you know, I think the really important thing is that um, you have up-to-date content. Um, that's like, what probably, does that mean? Like, well, let's, let, I mean, let's imagine you're a store, you know, um, that if you've got, you know, someone comes to your web page and they see you got a special, well, is that the actual special, you know, um, you've got like a contact information or a telephone number or anything, a, a address. You mean address the address is, should be right? Address. Yeah. You know, I've, I've sometimes gone to a store and then, well, they're no longer there, but, uh, yeah, I think that's really important. Um, how about the hours of operation? Yeah. Well, you know, um, the local post office here on their website, they don't have the up-to-date hours of operation. So it's something you're probably not used to seeing and, um, you know, you, you want to, but, uh, you know, strangely enough, if, uh, I think we're so used to seeing incorrect information on websites that we don't trust it. If they say our opening hours are these, I call to confirm because I'm so used to seeing incorrect information. Um, and I think especially for a small business where, uh, where trust and um, consistency, transparency and competition, you know, you're a small business. Um, I think that's where it's really, really important um, that people begin to, to trust your website. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, if yeah. it's not the sexy part of your website, but if your basic information, like name of business, your uh, phone number, your email address, uh, your location or locations, yeah. if it's a restaurant, yeah. uh, how about, uh, here's one of the things that really bugs me because I want to look at their social, especially if it's a restaurant or uh, kind of a venue, I want to see what their inside looks like. So a yeah. lot of times people will have websites with social links at the bottom, but they're not attached to social accounts. Yeah, that's <laughs> that drives me bananas. <laughs> Just don't, uh, don't build a website that has those images or those links if you're not going to fill them out. Yeah. Um, I was on a website yesterday, um, a, a great coffee and donut website in the UK. Uh, I'm not going to name them, but they do vegan donuts and the website just rocked. And it really, it really, you know, made me understand who they are and what they stand for. And I was really excited about what they had done to the website. And then, you know, I'm not in the UK. I can't go and get the donuts. Um, and uh, but they had three social media icons up there you know they had twitter they had facebook and they had instagram so, oh great because this is you know an instagram focused company so i click on this uh on this icon and um uh, there's just you know a, a hashtag and all three of them were just hashtagged so obviously you know these came with the theme or uh it's a work in progress but they hadn't actually linked these anywhere so I'm just like, click, click, click. And it's like, oh, well, now my disappointment's down because I really wanted to see their Instagram and stuff. But, you know, that happens a lot, um, especially with, with themes, because um, these things are out of the box and there's 16 social media icons up there. And you don't think, well, I've got to maybe attach my social media to it or it goes to the default, it just goes to facebook.com or twitter.com. Um, and that's uh, it's highly annoying. <laughs> and it's, it's a lost opportunity um you know you you the person's landed on your website but you know the mathematical chances of that happening are infinitesimal which i just didn't pronounce correctly but you know it's it's you know <laughs> they got there just don't let them go i know, know? that's that's that really getting important. that attention yeah. is the hard part 
right? Yeah. So having those links though are also super good for your SEO strategy. So, oh yeah. Yeah, so yeah. like as a small business, we shouldn't forget about the basic things. For example, I changed my Twitter handle. I had to go back and all of my yeah. different places on the internet, my, you know, littering of places that shows my profiles and make sure my Twitter handle was correct. Yeah. That's on me. And yeah. when, when you have a website that's on you to check, you know, go in, look at it, go um, search yourself in incognito mode and see what comes up. Um, does it say that you're offering brunch, but you don't anymore? Maybe you have bottomless mimosas, but the state of Texas said that's not legal, so you can't do it. <laughs> you know? yeah, I mean, yeah. you have to check that out, right? It's up to you to do that. So contact information is number one. Social icons being correct. What would you say is like the third area of focus for a small business? I just want to jump back to your second area of focus because you were talking about, um, you know, the contact information and things isn't sexy. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, a blinking whistles and lights sexy, but if I'm looking for, you know, vanilla ice cream in, in my neighborhood and um, your website says quite clearly that we sell vanilla ice cream, we're, oh, according to your mobile location, we're 100 meters away from you, just around the corner, and we're open now. And, and I find you, and you are open, and you are serving vanilla ice cream, you know, that's as sexy as it gets, because my intent was to get the vanilla, and you delivered, and right. that's great. You know, um, anything else, it's like you're teasing me, and then you're not delivering, and uh, that's, that's not, definitely that's a turnoff. <laughs> it can be a turnoff, especially, yeah, I mean, I... Yeah, yeah, it's not good. Well, from a um, psychological standpoint, you have, um, you, you know, it takes seven to 10 touches to gain a customer, all this we know. Yeah. But also when you make a mistake, it takes about 10 opportunities to regain that trust. Yeah. If, if they let you. If they let you, that's a very good point. Yeah. Having that information correct is super important. Yeah. If you do yeah. change your hours, you got to change that in everywhere, you yeah. know, everywhere that you have your hours listed. Google My Business, Yelp. Yeah. Anything like that. Facebook, your Facebook page sometimes has hours. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem, um, you know, because we got information everywhere. Um, you know, this is why I think it's uh, really important, maybe, you know, to, to focus and start on one thing that's really good and move out as you have the capacity, you know, if you don't have the capacity to, to service, you know, um, 10 different social media platforms, then you don't, shouldn't have 10 social media platforms. Well, you can keep the name. You, you can keep the name, but, um, you know, don't and just handle say, things like menus. Right. You know, I don't know how many people, and, and I'm certainly one of them, have uh, gone to a website, seen something on a menu, got very excited and then driven 30 minutes to the restaurant only to find out, oh yeah, that was last week's menu. Well, I'm here for that product and you don't sell that product. So I'm, I guess I might have to leave. Um, How many more times are you going to drive 30 minutes? Irritating. Yeah. It's, um, you know, you can live with it. Um, but, um, you know, I think we've really moved beyond um, customer satisfaction and dissatisfaction. We're really into this whole realm of, you know, customer excitement, customer delight. And I want to be, I want to be really happy. And I want to tell people about my experience. And I want to be your ambassador. And telling people that the menu on your website is three weeks out of date and you haven't managed to take it down. I don't know if I'm going to be very delightful about that. I'm going to tell a lot of people about it, but they're not going to get the message that you want. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So is that your third thing, having a correct menu, or is that go on? No, that, um, I'm going to put that into my bag of uh, your content needs to be up to date. Okay, so the third yeah. thing. Third thing, wow. Um, that's, uh, that's a really good question. You know, I think content's still really, really important. Um, you know, having your ups, website up to date, so you've got your, you know, anything clickable is, is going to be happening there. 
Um, you know, I, I want to say, I want to say security. I want to say a, a website that's, you know, actual, um, because I'm going to find that sort of safety, um, important, especially these days. Um, but I'm going to put that on the back and I'm going to say that I think it needs to, um, it needs to be responsive. Now, not the responsive, like it's going to go on my phone or anything. We've been doing that for the last 10 years. Okay. Well, we, we expect that you've got some of them are more responsive than others. That's true. That's true. But if your website doesn't work on my phone, Google's not even going to let me find you on my phone. I mean, so. if, but if it works, that doesn't mean you can read it. That's, a, that's another content. that's another call. That's we're going to do that next week. <laughs> um, I'm thinking when I when I mean responsive, I'm sort of touching on um, a customer delight, being responsive to what's happening now, and um, especially in the pandemic, everyone's at home. There's a lot of stress. Um, you know, if if you are a small business uh, or any business. Um, I think it's really important um, not to just respond to, you know, seasonal changes or demographic changes or political trends, whatever it might be. Um, I think it's really good to, um, to get across to um, your visitors that, that you get them. You know, it's, it's a little bit like, you know, our brand obsessions, you know, I'm, I'm together with the brand because I understand that they get me, they understand me. And then I want to be, I want to be buying what they're selling. Um, so I think this, this response of this really being responsive to what's happening within the ecosystem, especially for small local businesses, um, because they, they are a real integral part of the community. Um, and uh, they are con connecting with us, not just online, but also personally. Uh, so it means a lot of flexibility. But I think then, um, you know, this means for small businesses um, that the website uh, can be more than just a tool you have to have and it can really be a, a vehicle of communication you know it can be fun um, oh, then, could, I, yeah. mean, I mean i get the thirty thousand foot view but like say a small business owner is reading this and they're like what the f are you even talking about can you give us an example of what that looks like i i i as a marketer i know what you're saying you're saying don't be yeah. tone deaf don't show a bunch of pictures with people without masks on. We've been wearing them for a year. We're going to wear them for the, the rest of this year. We oh, might be wearing yeah. them forever. Like, I get that part, but can you yeah. give an example of what, what responsive means in that context? Okay, um, I think uh, right now, I mean, in, in, in our neighborhood, um, one of the things that are it's really confusing for um, people, even locally, um, is that you don't really know, is a store allowed to be open or is it not allowed to be open right now? Um, you know, it's a little vague. If the store is selling items even on a daily basis, it's allowed to be open, you know? So I think that would be an important um, message right on the website to always have up to date, you know? Um, and I think as well, um, and what I've seen, and that's a great example um, would be um, one of the wine stores in the area. Um, they've never delivered ever. They don't, they don't deliver. You know, I know this guy, he does not deliver. <laughs> um, but, you know, since this all started, his attitude is when the store closes, I have to drive home and between my home and the store, there are potential clients who might like to have uh, the wine delivered. So now he offers this, you know, he has the information on his website, but what I really like, is on the front window. He filled the entire front window with a hand-drawn sign that says, I'll deliver. And then, and then you know, his mobile number, you know? Nice. So he closes at six and then he spends the next hour just dropping things off. And this is great because for him, this is extra income. And for clients, it's like, you get it. You're responding to the trend. And when this is over, he's not gonna be delivering anymore, you know? but you know, this sort of movement, this flexibility, um, you know, I, I think some of that is, is, is really great. Not every business can do that, but every business can find a way to connect with their, with their customers, you know, and that loyalty be really, really important uh, going forward. Absolutely. That's a good I think. <laughs>
Well, that's a good wrap up for this week. You want to do this again? We'll definitely do this again. You know, we talked about three things. I can think of 33 things. So we're probably good for this well, year. Well, you kind of crammed a bunch of stuff in the first one. So if you want to uh, hear more tips for small businesses, nonprofits, schools, organizations, you're definitely going to want to subscribe to the channel below, like the button and share it on social media. Don't forget to go to Warren Lane Nida's uh, Amazon account. You can see the book behind you, but also here oh, is, yeah. a, here is a co another copy. You definitely want to go, see, I've already marked it up. You're definitely going to want to get this book on Amazon. It's going to be available on German in German soon. And yes. you can get it as Kindle too. And the trick with Kindle is if you have Alexa, the Alexa app and the Kindle app, she will read it to you. So then you can have it as an audio book. Okay. Well, we expect to see this shared on social. See ya. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>